Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Noct, and this is Soccer for Love. So last time we finished Lenarta's dates. Lenarta, I mean. This time we will meet the king in yellow. I have a feeling it might be what's her name, Missy. So this kind of uh, resembles her, I feel like. Let's see. Start. Chapter 2. The King in Yellow Approaches. I like the music. Chapter 2. The King in Yellow Approaches. In a world terrorized by slavering shadows and tentacled nightmares, something as innocuous as an additional star in the night sky may be the most prophetic premonition of doom. For wherever the lurid golden light of the planet Carcosa shines, the long, wicked shadow of the king in yellow is cast. Behind that mask lie echoes of decaden decadence and disorder, masquerades of limitless cruelty and hideous laughter in equal part. And of all the poor devils seduced by the lavish promises of the God King's court, the favored victims of the King's sadistic amusement are followers belonging to other deities. Huh? What? Where? Huh? Did I zone out? I was... What was I doing? Damn! I'm having one hell of a brain fart. I can't remember for the life of me what, I, what I'm supposed to do, be doing. Everything feels so hazy. Was I going to work? I am standing outside after all. Yeah, that's gotta be it. The sun is setting, so it's probably around 7pm. Which means I'm gonna be crazy late. Fantastic. That's the beauty of working nights. I can't use the excuse that I overslept. Yeah boss, I slept all day. Sun up to sun down. That's why I'm in. Six hours early for my shift. Huh? Those sound like the church's noontime noon time bells. It's high noon? No way. They must be doing some special evening service or something. I can, I, I can clearly see that it's Golden Hall right before sunset. I will just have to ask someone for the time on my way to work. If it's not too late and I really hoof it, I will just get chewed out instead of fired. I will still have to deal with being sweaty, but I will figure that out when I get there. Oh, someone's coming home. Perfect. Fingers crossed that I'm not absolutely screwed. Hey man! Sorry to bother you. You wouldn't happen to have the time on you, would you? Um... Man? Hello? Hey? Um... Hey? Is that someone in your mind? Why are you covered in blood? Is this guy ignoring me? Normally I would say whatever and walk away, but he's unfortunately standing in the only stairway of this floor. The only way to exit this conversation is to throw past him. But this guy is giving me such weird vibes, I don't want to go anywhere near him. The longer I look at him, this guy seems more and more... suspicious. That odd posture. He's slowly swaying in an uncanny, disturbing way. The color of his shirt looks fiercy, stained with splotches of deep browns and reds. Is he bleeding, maybe? Does he even live here? This is the top floor, and I thought I met all of my neighbors. There are only four apartments up here. My only choices are to go inside and call the police, or to walk past this freaky guy. I don't have the time to wait around for when the cops show up, so I will. But just as I take a step, I kick something baity with my shoe. It's bright pink, with gold accents. A book? What? Renata! But I died! The world ended! The shock freezes me in place, and because I was so distracted, I didn't even know. I duck inside my room, slamming the door in the suspicious man's face. Fumbling with the locks in a panic, I manage to turn the deadbolt. I take a few fearful steps back into the room, clutching the book to my beating chest. I died. I definitely died when I performed the final ritual. So why am I still here? Where is here? I lo- I lo- Logged in my room. I have nowhere to run. Oh, the painting changed. Ah, turtle, you are back. And I have a new mannequin. 
Lock den mal hier nur weiter dran. Lenata! Lenata! If Lenata wasn't here, was here, she could explain this. Maybe there's something in this book that can save me. I need, I need to hurry. Come on, come on, Lenata, where are you? Lenata, huh? Who is this Lenata you're trying to call? Uh, Missy? What are you doing in my room? I just so happened to overhear you saying, Lenata, where are you? You sounded like you were in trouble, so I let myself in. That's impossible. I put the deadbolt on. How did you even get in here? Your window was open. Um, was it? And wait, did you just climb the building to get into my room? I have a bad feeling about this. No, it's not. And either way, I'm on the top floor, so how did you? Lynetta sounds like a girl's name, right? This Lynetta is obviously the girl you stood me up for, isn't she? Uh, no? What, what is her deal? I know she would be I slammed the door in her face, but not so much that so, they, that so that she wouldn't notice any of the things obviously wrong here. Why doesn't she care about those freaky things talking me outside? Or oh, that my room is full of evil idols and ritualistic tokens? I can explain all this stuff. I can. Just let me. Let me guess. Accursed devices used to channel eldritch magics and do the bidding of outer gods. Um, pretty much, yeah. How? Well, yeah, exactly right. Did you just randomly guess that? No, I've just been playing coy. I know exactly what you've been doing. You know what this is, don't you? Yes. It's a golden version of my book. The book I used to perform rituals for Lenata. Hers look way more ornate than mine. Considering I ended really free with mine, I can't imagine how dangerous hers must be. Wait a minute, the sky, the suspicious man outside, the homage Mrs. Book. Is she making all of this happen? Oh god, oh god, when I expected her to do something crazy, I thought she was just gonna show off with a hatchet or something. Here's Missy! Missy, look! I'm sorry, okay, I just got wrapped up in something, please, don't, don't make me do this. Sorry? You're sorry? Why are you acting so afraid of me? No reason at all, I guess. <laughs> Could it be that you know what this book is capable of? I know all too well, but I also know that these incantations take at least 5 seconds to pronounce. That's if she gets it right on the first try. So worst case, I have 5 seconds to stop her. If I dash for my ritual knife behind her, I might be able to kill her before she does something terrible to me. If I can distract her, I might be able to buy myself more time. Missy, look, I will do whatever you want. Anything? I can be rather demanding. I noticed. Definitely. Name your price. So bold. In that case, I have three commands. Number one, you'll address me as Your Highness from now on. So when I come home, it's welcome home, Your Highness. Okay, when she comes home, she wants to move in, but that means whatever, it's not like I'm going to have to actually follow through on, the, on this. At least one of us is about to die. As you wish, your highness. What else? Number two, you'll quit your job so you can spend every waking moment catering to me, your one and only. Sure, whatever, just a little bit more until I'm in sprinting range of the knife. Number three, you'll obey every order and whim I have, absolutely, without question. Do you agree to my terms? Absolutely! Absolutely, your highness. I'm really sorry for my earlier behavior. I will make sure it won't happen ever again. Absolutely... what? Absolutely, your highness. I'm sorry, I forgot to say it the first time. It's still new to me. Please, don't punish me. Yet. <laughs> I suppose if you will do whatever I ask, then there's no need to use any of these dreadful spells on you. Thank As you, a Your Highness. Fact, I believe you can help me with them. Here. She just handed over the book without a second thought. Yellow energy pulses and crackles from my fingertips. She. 
Is she not here to help me? Oh, confused. I've liked you for a long time, and you're a capable bookkeeper. Handsome to boot. There's no reason we can't simply work together. If you say so, your highness. After all, a relationship based on threats of violence and fear is no good, right? Absolutely, your highness. Uh, right, your highness. You know, really escaped with our lives just now. But something is bothering me. How does she remember that I stood her up in the reality that ended under Lenata's awakening? And how did she get in through my window? I doubt she was able to climb several stories dressed like that, and then pass through my locked window without breaking it. There's only one possible answer. Alright, your highness. I'm ready to enter my lifetime of servitude to you. I just have one small request first. Being? Could you tell me what th this is? <laughs> really? This is the test, if they are an Eldritch Goddess. I love it. Huh? Your Worcestershire sauce? What about it? So, you're an Eldritch God disguised as a human. What? How did you figure that out so suddenly? Because you can pronounce it. No one can pronounce British shit. Everyone knows. Isn't it obvious? No human being can pronounce worst war chest where... Worcestershire. Of course not, it's an eldritch loan word. Why else would it be spelled like that? <sighs> I was careless. After all this time I wasted trying to seduce you in this slovenly form. Yeah, you should have tried using your eldritch form instead. I would have fallen in love immediately. What? What? You think cosmic entities are attractive? As a human? Hell yeah, I just smooshed one with tentacles all over it. It was one hell of a lifetime. 3D women are fine, but 4th dimensional girls with non-Euclidean geometry are smoking hot. They got curves I can literally get lost in. <laughs> if I had known that you're attracted to my cosmic godhood, I would have just led with that. <clears throat> Allow me to properly introduce myself. I am Esther, king in yellow, heiress to Carcosa, charmed I'm sure. She's gorgeous, a bona fide, bona fide eldritch king in my room. But I think that's a mistranslation. It, it would only work as a queen. Right? Right? I think so. Oh man, all my fantasies of smooching an eldritch horror are coming true. An eldritch royalty to boot. I feel like I'm Lord Farron suddenly. The king in yellow. Sounds familiar. I can't remember why. My memory of my other existence is kind of fuzzy. What I do remember is that her followers tend to be incredibly violent towards cultists loyal to other gods. Like Lenata. Shit. I kinda got swept up in the moment and almost forgot I already pledged fealty to a different god. This reality or not. Uh, wait. I'm sorry. I'm already involved with another god. I'm following Lenata. I know. So loyal, so faithful and devoted. That's why I want you to be my follower instead. Will we have a Eldritch God fight? Lenata versus Estil? That would be interesting. In exchange for serving me, I shall grant you anything you desire. Wealth, power, whatever that rotten witch Lenetta offered you, I can double it. I don't know. Lenetta wasn't a rotten witch. I don't like how you talk about her. She was a true beauty with all her eldritchness. She promised me a smooch, so I get two from you. Then I shall. What? 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 <laughs> you handed over your reality to her for a singular smooch? Are you mad? Uh, just a bit. You heard me. So you will match her offer then. you're selling the world for, then a smooch can be uh, arranged. Good. No way, you promised to double it. That's two smooches. No, hold on a minute! No, 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 you hold on a minute, missy. You want me to be your servant. 
I have already pledged to Lenata. So you either double the price or get out from here. You can kill me, whatever. I will die loyal then. Two of them. On the lips. Maybe we can push this a bit further, if you know what I mean. I just... Usually my followers ask for inordinate wealth, unquestionable fame and influence, or some lavish indulgence. Your kisses are lavish indulgences enough. Nobody's ever dared to ask to kiss me before, so... She's bluffing for real. You really want to smooch me? Yes. Your Highness. Well, <clears throat> your terms are amenable. Suffice it to say, I'll expect you to perform your scenes flawlessly in exchange. Scenes? The prompt book I gave you contains the script for the King in Yellow. Huh? You mean this spell book that I was so afraid of? It's just a damn play. This thing is just a playbook. There are all the power invoking rituals. Rituals? Is this some sort of peasant joke that I'm too rich to understand? Okay, no. I like you better you already. The barbaric swamp folk casting hocus pocus in a cave. We have a little class. To invoke my power, my play must be performed perfectly. Sorry, Lunata. I take it back. I don't like her better. It was just a sudden, sudden rough of sort. But no, you are my elite goddess. Perfectly. I don't always get these rituals, um, I mean, scenes, right the first time. What happens if I botch my lines, or set a scene wrong? Your performance will receive a scathing review in the Carcosan Times publication, and you'll also be killed. Oh. So that's how it is. <coughs> I'm getting those smooches, no matter what. Break a leg, dearest. I will break all of them, and then grow new ones and break those too. Okay, this place is empty. Oh, okay. So, hello, Turtle. I love you, Turtle. Oh, we have a new slot. Interesting. Yeah, yellow robes this time. Let's see. The king in yellow. Can I check everything already? Anything special? No. Okay. Setting. Ex exterior in view of city. Then we go out. Host. Click and drag the first word of the first line. Slowly. Greetings, stranger, fortune fellow. Tis a party for which I bellow. Greetings, stranger, fortune fellow. Tis a party for which I bellow. I invite the king in yellow. So come all, ye in Italy. We're tied mask upon you to my masquerade until he may come to lost detail. Hope for us there may be still. Shadows lengthen dim streets darken to the curfew thou must hearken why so loudly does thou bark in the dim city of Yatil. Only much attention quite unwholesome you'll instill from the souls of poor Yatil. Why attract so much ill will? Um. Uh. It's still ill will. That is just what I must seek, see, hidden somewhere amongst the meekly, this one invitee I seek, he shall all my mistakes undo. Tis the king in yellow, whose great wealth I shall accrue, when his shadow passes through, best will come to I and you. Lo, your plans shall surely languish, and this whole town will know anguish for the king as whom they say, which shall this city indeed smite. If he comes, you tell him you and I will know his might, all be lost within a night, which reward is worth that price. Price. Wearing this expensive clothing, pardon for my family's loathing, lasting till I'm decomposing all my friends whom strive I've caused. 
Yes, preparing for this night, their forgiveness is the cause. They shall all be proud because I had brought the king to us. Thank you. Thank you. Bravo! Simply splendid! Why, thank you! That was actually pretty fun. I haven't gotten to flex my acting chops since high school. You're no stranger to the stage, I can tell. Yeah, I was a theater kid. My school did my best. A virtuoso of the bard, are we? If you've performed Shakespeare, then you must be an actor of sufficient ability to survive my play. Oh, I will survive and get my smooches. You can count on that. Tell me, what role were you? The leading man, I presume. I was three number four. <laughs> I expected that so I much. I wasn't aware that was a role. Well, now you know. Three number four, right here, right now. I played in Shakespeare, the most glorious role ever. It's not. You weren't even the leading tree? <laughs> Don't worry, I was actually more bad. I thought you said you were a tree. Acting, darling. Acting. You know how it goes. Oh, you are good. Oh, hey, what's happening to you? Don't fret, dearest. Something is simply passing between my planet's light and your bedroom. A cloud, perhaps. You know the proverb, wherever the golden light of Carcosa shines, the shadow of the unspeakable one is cast? It's a literal rule. I can uh. only be wherever the light of my planet star Carcosa shines. In other words, I can't reach you at night when you're not standing in natural light, or if anything obstructs your view of Carcosa. Interesting. That explains why Missy had a weird daytime curfew. She would literally vanish when the sun sets. What a Cinderella like hers. And that also explains how she got in my room. My window may have been locked, but the curtains were open, allowing the light in. So she can't get into my room if I close my curtains. Aww, I was quite enjoying my time with you. I wanted to stay a little longer. Alas, parting is such sweet sorrow. It may be some time until your sky clears. Until then, I bid you adieu. Oh. Well, looks like I have one hell of a choice to make. Leonardo hasn't been summoned yet, and Esther is stuck outside for a moment, so I have a moment to collect my thoughts. Between Leonardo and Esther, who do I want to smooch? Or maybe more accurately, who am I more afraid of? Do I stay with Lenata, or do I follow Esther this time around? She is offering twice as many smooches after all. I need to make my choice. If I want to stay with Lenata, then I should focus on casting spells from her book. If I want to smooch Esther, then I should open my window again when the clouds clear and use Esther's book. And if I try going for both, well, walking down the middle of the road is bound to get me run over. As long as, there are, as they aren't both in the room at the same time, I should be safe, right? Oh man, what am I going to do? Either way, I need to talk to Lenata. She might be an avatar of world ending calamity, but she might be able to help me get my head straight. Speaking of my head, why does my forehead feel kinda sticky? Um. Oh. What just happened? How how did this happen? Oh, no smooch anymore on the forehead. Okay. Hmm. I need to talk with Anata. But we will talk with her in the next episode. I like where this is going. It will be way more complex this time. So, thank you for watching and have a nice day. Bye.